Hello everybody. Let's see what is an API. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. So most of the applications in the mobile phone using API. For example, if we take a mobile application which requires internet connection to work, most probably that is using an API to communicate with the server. So here also we are going to see an example how an API work um, and we will do a small experiment. So the API which we are going to look for is called REST API which is working over HTTP or HTTPS. We are going to interact with Jira. Jira have an API to interact with through a REST call. So we will use that REST API. To test that one, we will be using a tool called Postman. So there we can easily experiment by looking at the tutorials and actually see how it works. From there onward, we can take it into our programming language. Then um, we can code accordingly um, and use it. Postman will help us to export most non-coding um, code blocks uh, on the experiment at REST API. So we don't even have to search how to implement it on Java or Python, something like that. Postman will help us to export and take the code. In this REST API, few standards are there. So we need to follow the standard. One thing, how, what is the method we are using to communicate to the server. So there are major methods like get, post, put, and additionally something like delete, request, different things are available. So we will be using those methods. So for example, if I say get, I want to query a DB and get the output and see what it is, what is in the database. Post method used to insert. So if I want to make an insert, a new record, I need to use post method. And if I want to um, update a record, I need to use put method. And if I want to remove a record from a database, I need to use delete method. Then it will give a response. It will have output as well as the response code. So response code also have some stories, something like 1, 100, so 100 to 199, those are the initial status, then uh, 200 are the healthy status, so any, any series coming in 200, actually uh, we communicated successfully, so 200 to 299, any number, 300 to 399, those are redirects, so they migrated, so they will use this as a standard uh, header set, then uh, they will inform us, so it's migrated. If 400 series coming, um, there is no issue with the server, but uh, the method we are using or any, any way of interacting with that one is not as expected by the server. So they, we say it has uh, the issue in the client side, so maybe client need to follow the new standard. 500 series are server errors. If server have any problem, configuration issues, anything, 500 to 509, uh, 599 errors, any, any error code will come in 500 series. So these are the basics in the REST API. Let's go and see how to interact with Jira through REST code. In this section, we'll see how the Jira REST API working. So I created the instance on Jira as uh, this one. So the first portion is the instant name which we creating and the remaining atlassian.net um, is belong to uh, Atlassian website. Then um, in this selection, just see, so we have projects. So two projects set up into this uh, instant. So one is digital service portal, so that ID, reference ID is DSP. Other one is demo service portal, it was default. So DESK. In this one, we selected DSP. So how we can say which one we selected? So this portion. So after project, this portion is DSP. This is the project ID. Just not this point, we will be using this. After this, see here, we have the list of issues. So how, how we say this issue? go here and try to create an issue so this list 
we have to select the project then we have to select what is the issue type task or epic then we will be giving summary it is just something like a title then description then we will be making an assignee so these are the important portion we have to note down while we using the uh, rest call we will be using these things once done this is the sample issue manually created here so we can use this to study how the api will look like so i'm just clicking on this one so it will open the issue and the detail so not the point uh, subject uh, so this is uh, the summary subject area this is a description portion in the description i formatted the test text to see how it will look like so just a red color font given in the middle then this is the reference id the human readable reference id behind the scene it will have a machine readable just an integer number so that is available here as well so dsp is the project hyphen then the issue first issue is this one right let's go to the postman and see how it look like so a few things to notice here so this is the get request So here what we do is, this is a get request, so we have to select as a get request, again the base URL, then REST API 2 or 3 here, then issue, then this is the ticket ID which I show as a human readable key for the particular ticket. Then in the authorization section, select the basic authentication, then username. This username is the username used to log into that, this particular URL. But the password section is the API key. It is not the password you are using to log in. It is the API key created and it will be utilized this. After providing this detail, just click the update request button. After that, if we go to the header section, header will be created with this string. Authorization basic like this one, right? So then what we have to do is we have to go there and send the request. When we send the request, it will query and the output will come. The output visible in this area. So the DSP one, this is a ticket we were looking for and the ID is the machine readable, machine's reference. Either we can go to this URL and directly see or um, using this API key ID or same as what we seen in this web page. When we click here, that way also we can go and see the ticket details. So that is one thing. In this ticket, the few points we have to note, so because this is the one going to be the body when we are submitting or inserting a new ticket using the rest api so key find we are not going to give because it's auto generated the field section will be there under the field section some of the portions are important because we have to submit it the custom fields if we want we can submit it mainly we have to go to the summary and the description so description is available here as i mentioned Go to the ticket and see. Description telling I couldn't access my then a red color text. Then could you please check on it? Just carefully see this. Then go to this portion. I couldn't access my then some block. It is telling text color red F00 mean text uh, red color one. That text is open VPN. Then the remaining text is a normal text coming like this. So this is how we have to format it. It is very complex. So we need a programming language. And anyway, the REST API used by the programming language. So that language should use this logic and format the text and send. If you want to send the formatted text. Plain text, no problem. Just we can directly put into this version. And we don't need a um, separating blocks like this. After this one, uh, summary also here. So summary is the subject. This is important. Then remaining are okay. Right. So this is how we just uh, uh, do the uh, insert uh, based on the ticket. We can identify what are the parameters. So this is anyway, it's a get request to see how the ticket look like and what are the values in the ticket. Now, one more thing important here. We need to put assignee. So you can see here assignee. To put this assignee, we need to know who are the people available as assignee. So this is the next request. Again, the same authorization and all, get method. And the rest, so this is our project URL. Then rest, API, version 3 or 2 also, okay. Then user assignable search, query string, 
project than the DSP. This is the project I, at the beginning I said DSP here, that is the project's shortcode, DSP or DSK. Once given these details and they execute the uh, REST call, it will um, it will just uh, return the value. So in this value, we can see the blocks. So two users are there as assignee. So email address will be shown, it's optional field. Then display uh, name also will be shown. So in the second one, email address uh, blank actually, it's not given. So display name only visible. So this is how a response will look like. Then we'll go for an insert, how it will look like. So to insert a new ticket, this is how we go. Again, the base project uh, instant URL, then REST API, REST API, version 2 or 3, then issue. Method is post because we are inserting it. Then authorization section, basic authentication, then username as we log into this URL, then the password as the REST API. Make sure this username should be there. Without this username also, it will appear like working. It will authenticate, but it will throw an error message saying, um, uh, we are not privileged to add this particular thing. After this one, we have to just click the update request. So if we go to the header section, the authorization and basic, this is an encoded username and password. This additional thing we have to add ourselves, content type and application JSON because our payload is a JSON. Then go to the body section. So this is a minified version of this one, what we seen here. Only the mandatory fields are there with the same structure. We put it here. So important fields are project, either key or ID we can use. So key mean this one, ID mean it, it is a number string. Then summary is the subject, description. As I said, if it is a plain text, no need to put too much of blocks, straight away we can put it. Otherwise, this block will repeat for every block of text to be formatted, how and, and all. After that, issue type, we are mentioning the task. That issue type, we can see on this portion. So, if I am adding a new ticket, the first section, issue type. What we select here is the one. So, if it is key, the visible name, otherwise we have to go for an ID. So, now we can see here only one ticket available. Then the second ticket will appear here as postman. So I will just submit and show. Click the send button. It's submitted and we can see the body section, the response come. We need to be careful on this portion. So this is a reference ID in the next update. If you want to send an update or back to back comments on the same ticket, either this ID or this key we have to util utilize because that is a ticket reference or directly this URL also will allow you to go and do updates or put method to update this ticket or maybe adding a comments to the ticket we can do like that now we'll go there and see so this should have one more ticket now so just see only one ticket is there to do one issue now we go there and see the second issue came issue from postman and i click that one it will open the ticket so the reference id also there DSP4, DSP is a project code, then the number four, the fourth incident, um, the previous one I deleted actually. So I am posting this request from Postman. So this is how the ticket getting created through um, Postman request.